device. Uh, the launch locks are on the top in white. Uh, the soft capture cone uh, will be the first part that will align uh, when they bring the truss together and provide the soft capture of the S5 to S4. Uh, and the primary bolt is shown in the center and the bottom picture and they will basically be driving that bolt to actually attach the uh, two trusses together. And again, there's one of these on each of the four corners of the S5 truss. The next picture shows you the other side, which is on the S4 currently on orbit. The S5, ground, S5 to S4 ground strap is another piece of hardware that the crew will have to connect between the two truss segments. And the soft capture pin shown on the bottom is what will provide the soft capture uh, before the crew actually begins the bolting operations. Uh, that will basically pop a pin into that uh, large diameter cone that you saw earlier on the last picture. Back to the video. Once the truss is completely attached, Rick and Dave will begin to relocate the PVR grapple fixture from the forward side of the S5 truss to the keel structure, where it will be stowed uh, on orbit. Moving this is required to allow the rotation of the forward solar arrays. The crew will do a handoff of the grapple fixture with Dave passing it to Rick, then both will attach it to the S5 keel. There are three S-5 get-ahead tasks that can be performed in preparation for Flight 15A, which is this S-6 truss installation. The first get-ahead is the removal of the S-5 outboard launch locks at each of the corners. The second is the opening of the capture latch assembly claw used to capture the S-6 truss. With this, the installation of the X-6 only requires manually closing the claw at 127 turns. The last get ahead is on the nader side of the S5. And these tasks essentially we plan to move into these tasks if we are ahead on the timeline. The last get ahead is six connection of six power and data cables between S5 and S4. These cables will eventually provide the link from the S4 truss out to the last truss element, S6. The crew will remove connector caps and the, on the S4 side and then route and connect the six cables to S4. With the, installate, with the S5 installation uh, complete, our focus changes to the forward photovoltaic radiator on the P6 truss. This radiator must be retracted not only for the P6 truss to be relocated on the next flight, but also to provide clearance for robotic arm operations on our STS-118 EVA-3. Rick and Dave will work their way around the radiator and place themselves to view the retraction of the radiator itself. They will then begin attaching six inches on the, onto brackets on all sides of the radiator which will hold the panels in place during the relocation of the P6 truss. I have a few pic uh, picture here of the cinches themselves. Uh, essentially, these are very s the same cinches that the uh, 12A.1 stage EVA crews uh, worked with back in February. Um, essentially, the crew works with these cinches. They're a cable device that they will hook up over a bracket onto the radiator, which you see on the left and there's a single bolt that they drive which tightens up the cable and will hold down the panels of the uh, radiator itself. And again, this is in preparation for moving the P6 truss on the next shuttle flight out to its uh, permanent location. Uh, with that, that completes EVA-1, and I uh, begin into the next video for EVA-2. EVA-2 will be the replacement of the CMG number three on the Z1 truss element. Again, Rick and Dave will leave the ISS airlock. The first task is to set up a foot restraint which is stored on the airlock and place it on the station arm for use by Dave later in the EVA. They will then translate up to the aft side of the Z1 truss where the station's four CMGs are located. Dave will go 
above the CMGs and Rick will reposition a foot restraint and climb into it so he can handle the failed CMG number three. They will then remove an MLI cover from the CMG itself. Dave will install a ball stack onto a handrail which will provide the method for temporarily stowing the failed CMG after it's removed from the truss. They both unbolt six bolts and four electrical connectors and then Rick will hold the CMG while Dave attaches it to the ball stack. They will then translate to the shuttle payload bay to retrieve the new CMG from the ESP3 cargo carrier. Dave will ride on the station arm. They will first remove an MLI cover from the CMG. Rick will then release the FRAM on the CM, which the CMG and its support structure hardware is mounted. The whole package will be grabbed by Dave on the arm, which will then take him up to ESP2. While Dave is in motion towards ISS, Rick will move across the ESP3 carrier in the payload bay to reconfigure power cables on the carrier. In the two locations on ESP3, Rick will disconnect the shuttle supplied power and configure ESP3 for its on-orbit home on P3. With that, ESP3 can be removed from the payload bay the next day. Rick will then translate to meet Dave at the ESP2 FRAM site where the new CMG will be placed. Dave will place the FRAM on ESP2 and Rick will bolt the unit down. Then they will remove the six bolts holding the new CMG to its support structure and Dave will then grab the new CMG. Dave with the new CMG will then ride the arm back around to the aft side of Z1 truss. Rick will translate back up to the Z1 and get in the foot restraint again. When Dave arrives, he will hand the new CMG to Rick, then he will get off the arm and help Rick place the CMG into the truss structure. They work together to bolt down the CMG and connect the electrical connectors. Dave will then help get the old CMG into Rick's hands, get back on the arm, and then receive the old CMG from Rick. As Dave rides the arm with the old CMG back to ESP2, Rick will complete to close out of the new CMG cover and return the foot restraint to its original location. Back at ESP2, they will reverse the process and mount the old CMG into the support structure.